May the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable to thee, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Good morning. When I was 21, I went for a semester to the University of Lancaster in England. And as part of that time, I spent time with a family lived in their home. They had two little kids, Graham and Marion. And I loved it so much. One day, Graham came running in and he said, we're going to have dinner. We're going to have grilled sandwiches. How many do you want? And I said, one. Because, and he said, okay. So we went off and when we sat down to dinner, there was the grilled sandwich on my plate and I picked it up and I bit into it. Now, what is in a grilled sandwich? <laughs> cheese, exactly. Not liver paste, <laughs> cheese. There are many times in this life where you do not know what you do not know. This morning, that's where James and John found themselves. They did not know what they did not know. They did not um, take care in what they were asking for. It is astonishing to me that they did not know. Because you see, right before this, in a piece of the gospel that we did not hear last week nor this week, Jesus says really plainly what is going to happen. He says to the disciples, okay, here's what's going to happen. I am going to be tortured. They're going to spit on me. I'm going to suffer and die. And then all of a sudden you have this passage where the, the disciples are jockeying for personal position, for power. And when you look at it in a individual human way it makes sense because they felt out of sorts they've been told this really hard thing the things were going to get bad and so they're like we better cement our position right we've got to make it so that we're on the top and understandably the other disciples were not amused because they were saying to their cell, themselves i believe Oh, wow, we're behind. We should have been going for the top spot. This is really natural. And Jesus says, this is not how it works in Christian community. Because as much as this first part of the reading is all about these individual reactions and the feelings that people have, more than that, this reading is about the community of believers. It's about the community of people who are following Jesus and who are doing uh, miracles and healing, who are praying together. Jesus is really clear that being part of that community is not for the faint of heart. Being part of this community, this community who follows Jesus, who loves Jesus, who does the work of Jesus isn't easy. Now, on this one, I'm going to give the disciples a break because I don't think they exactly knew what Jesus was saying when he said, you will drink the cup that I drink and you will live the baptism. You will be baptized in the baptism that I have been baptized into. But we know, don't we? We were at the Last Supper and we know that Jesus said, this cup is my blood. We know in the history of the church that being baptized puts a mark on you and it's the mark of God and it's a blessing. But it calls you into hard work. It calls you into challenging things. In Greek, this word for baptism, what it means is to be deluged almost to the point of drowning in water. 
that's what Jesus promised us this morning, that our baptism will take our breath away, will bring us to the point of death. And then we will come into new life. But Jesus isn't just speaking on an individual level here. He's speaking to the community. He's communicating to his disciples how this community is going to work. And what he says is, it's different than anything you've ever known. It's different than the way the world works. It's different than jockeying for power. It is different than trying to always get the upper hand. Last week, I went to an air supply concert. Now, I think many of you know that that was a very retro experience. <laughs> but it was so much fun. And I went to the concert, and everybody gathered, masked, vaccinated, and we all sang together. And everybody knew the words of all the songs. And Air Supply was on the stage. But what it was about was not the singers who had been there together singing together for 53 years. It was about the community. It was about knowing the words. It was about being together with a common understanding. You know where I'm going with this? This week, Melanie put out an email with the news of her retirement. And we are so happy for her and her grandbaby and her family. And we are very sad for us just the way we always are when this community loses someone. But we know that this community isn't about the leadership. It isn't about who is leading the songs. It's about all of us coming together and worshiping the same God and loving the same God, and doing the good work together. Yesterday, we had a wedding here. Rebecca Mulready uh, married. Uh, and when I got here, she was about this tall. And Rebecca came back here to celebrate her marriage because this community taught her to sing. This community taught her what love was about. And so when she wanted to celebrate love, she came back here. And her youth group people, the people in her cohort, came from all over and came back here. And the Davises, who moved to Alabama 15 years ago, came back here. And it didn't matter that they hadn't been here in 15 years. It didn't matter that they had been away. They were part of this community. Because what we believe from the gospel is that what's important is being here. Whether you've been here five minutes or 50 years, we are all the same. There's a deeper implication of this teaching though. It teaches us how to be community. It teaches us that we are still ourselves, even in the face of a loss. But more than that, it teaches us that we are uniquely called to upend the systems of the world. The ones that are holding people back, that are putting people down. I've been doing uh, Sacred Ground, the anti-racism training, and I've been learning a lot, and I could talk about that for a long time, so I'm not going to get into it. But it's made me see the world differently, and it's made me see the church differently. And 
it's brought me back to the realization that when we love God as a community, when we worship God as a community, it builds in us this willingness to do what Jesus is calling us to do, to completely flatten the structure, to serve one another and not worry about who's on top. Because you see, when people stop climbing to be on top, what happens is you get parity. Everybody is beloved. Everybody is important. And then we can praise God together as a community. This morning's reading is hard. It's a little scary. The idea of searching for new leadership in this place is hard. It's kind of scary. But God reassures us we are community. And when we flatten the structure, when we love one another, when we serve one another, that is when we begin to live in community in the way that God intends. It's the moment when we begin to transform the world.